When writing Markdown, sometimes you'll want to link to the same web page or file for multiple places in a document. If you do this, if you ever need to change the link, you'll have to update all of those locations, and it can be easy to forget one. Reference links can solve this by letting you define a link definition once, and then reusing that link definition multiple places in your file. Let's take a look at how you can do this. So in this example markdown file, we have two links to example.com. So the first one up here, and then the second one down here. Now, if we ever wanted to change where these links are pointing, which are supposed to go to the docs, this would be sort of a pain because we'd have to remember to update both of these locations. Instead, let's use reference links to go and fix this. So as the first step of creating a reference link, we need to define where the link is going to go and give it a name. So at the end of our file, we're going to create a link definition. A link definition consists of a reference name in square brackets. So we'll just type some square brackets here and then create a reference name. So I'll say something like docs here. And then after that, we're going to type a colon and then the link destination, which I'm just going to grab as example.com. So now we have defined a link definition down here. Again, this is the reference name over inside the square brackets. And then here is the destination. This destination could also be a file path instead of being a URL like this. At this point, we can now create reference links in our file using that link definition. So let's go up to the first one here, and we're going to replace the link destination here inside of our link with a reference link instead. So we're going to include the uh, parentheses in our selection here and replace those with square brackets instead. And then here, we're going to type out the reference name. So I'm going to say docs. This is the full reference link syntax. So on the left side, inside of the square brackets, we have the text that is going to be shown when the markdown is rendered. And then on the right side, we have uh, also inside of the square brackets, the reference name that is going to be resolved from the link definitions at the bottom of the file. This link has the exact same behavior as before. So when you click on the link, it's still going to go to example.com. But the nice part is that if we go and update this other link as well, so let's go and update the second link in the file here to also use that reference link syntax. If we ever want to change this link, all we have to do is go and update a single location in the file. So we can just go and say something like docs here. And now both of these links will have been updated to point to this new location. Sometimes you also might prefer using reference links just as a style thing. So it can be nice to have all of your links at the bottom of a file. And if the links are especially long, this syntax can also be a little bit more readable rather than having a large inline link in your text. Now let's take a look at a few other features of reference links and some alternative syntaxes that you can use to be even more concise. So the reference name here actually can be any text. Um, so it does not have to be a word without spaces. If we wanted to, we can actually go and update all of the references here to have a space in it. So we could say something like the and then docs. This is also going to be correctly resolved. So the reference name, all you have to have is a use the same reference name in the definition and in each location. It does not matter if the reference name contains spaces. This might be useful with some of the alternative forms of reference links. So let's go and let's say that we wanted to make this even more concise. You can see that we're repeating the word documentation a few times here. Now, if the reference name is exactly the same as the text that you want to show in the editor, so let's go and change it so it looks something like that. So we'll have the docs here. So now when this link is rendered, it's going to say, check out the docs. And then the reference name is also the docs. You can see that we're repeating this text twice, which is not great. We can actually use a shorthand in this instance. So I'm going to go and just delete the reference name, but keep the square brackets. And now at this point, we have created a reference that is going to use the link text itself as the reference name. So this will correctly render as saying, check out the docs, but also then resolve the reference name as the docs, which is what we defined down here in our link definition. We can confirm that by opening up the preview and it says, check out the docs. And if I click on this, it's going to open example.com. If we want to be even shorter, though, we can actually get rid of the empty square brackets here. So we could go in here and say, let's get rid of those. And now we've created a reference link that is going to, again, show the docs as the rendered text, and then use the same link definition at the bottom of the file just by using those square brackets around the text that we want to use as a reference link. The advantage of the full reference link form, like you can see down below, though, is that the text that is being shown doesn't actually have to match uh, the reference name at all. And you can use this to have different text shown for each of the link references within your file. The reference link syntax also works for images. So this lets you reuse the same image multiple times in the same file. So we're going to go in here and let's define an image. So we'll do uh, exclamation mark and then the uh, image syntax here with the square brackets. And then instead of having the normal link destination, which would be something like cat.jpg, something like that, we're actually going to use the reference link syntax instead. So I'm going to go here and replace this with a reference link. And I'm just going to say cat. At this point, we now want to define the link at the bottom of our file in the link def uh, destinations or definitions. So I'm going to say cat is the reference name, then colon. And I'm just going to give a file path. So I'll say cat.jpg. If we now render this document, 
you can see that the image is correctly being shown. So again, we're using the reference name to define the image. And I can even use this multiple places in the same file. So let's go and add another, another usage of that. You can see that the same image is being linked to. If I ever then want to change the image, all I have to do is update this one link definition at the bottom of the file. So that's a quick look at reference links in Markdown. They can make maintaining documentation a little bit easier, and you also might find that you just prefer them stylistically.